Welcome back to the Dropping In Surf Show. My name is Rob Case, and I am a paddling technique coach located in Northern California. Today on the show, I have a board maker and thought provoker, Zuhair Belcora. He was asked to shape a surfboard for a friend, and based on his own opinion, he told his friend he'd make him a longer board. But his friend insisted on a shorter board, just one with more volume. This friendly debate led to a curious question about whether board length or board volume made a bigger difference in paddling. Since at the time the question was posed, there wasn't any academic research on the topic, Zuhair decided to create a small experiment to find out if he could take a more scientific approach to answering this question. Here's our discussion of the results of his experiment. Enjoy. I mean, I, I got into shaping. And I got into shaping because I'm interested in how stuff really works. And if you buy it off the rack, you can't really mess with it, right? And um, so in my mind, I always liked thin boards. And so I was really happy when this guy asked me, hey, I want you to make me a board that paddles well, but that I can duck dive. And I was like, great, I'm going to make you a thin eight-foot board. And uh, he said, yeah, maybe. <laughs> and then in the <laughs> end, we landed on, he already had his mindset on like this big fish. So, so that's what I made for him because in his mind, that's something that paddles well and duck dives. A thick, right? a short, fish. thick, short fish. It was yeah. like a six footer, right? Which probably like you can dive that and you can paddle it too. But uh, then I started thinking, well, it's obvious that length paddles better than volume. That's more important, um, especially when you want to dive a board as well. Just make it longer and thinner. But I asked around and. None of the friends I know here, the locals, like, have a clear, straight opinion. It was more like two caps. Some people say, obviously length, and the other ones were like, no, it's all about volume. Yeah. And when you ask them why, they don't really know, right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, like, one say, well, it's because it lifts you out the water more, right? And it's, you don't, you don't drag as much of your body through the water, but yeah. nobody really knew why. So. Yeah. so, yeah, so I thought about this, and I tried to read up and uh, didn't really find an answer, except for boat building, where they say, oh, you know, the longer your vessel, the more efficiently the water goes around, right? And the less effort you have to put in to get that thing moving mm -hmm. up to a certain speed. That's the whole speed that you yeah, talked about speed, yeah. in, in your other podcasts, right? And, uh, but the reason why that wasn't good enough, quote unquote, for me as an answer, that length is really the factor that determines how efficient a board will paddle is that half of us is submerged, right? Yeah. And um, I first saw this when I, when I was in your pool to like get my paddling analyzed, right? And I saw that there's not actually much of the board over water. Like yeah. if you look at the sideways view, it's like I am hanging in the water as much as I'm swimming basically. And so it could be that the volume is actually what makes the difference because the further up you are, the less of our not very streamlined bodies are in the water. So, yep. yeah. So I said, yeah, let's make three boards that are the same volume, but have different lengths, and let's try it out. Yeah. Let's uh, let's do that. So that's why I called you up because you've got the endless pool, which is like a controlled environment, like a treadmill for mm -hmm. for swimmers, and uh, that's the only way to really measure. Like, okay, does it make a difference or not? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was cool. I'm, I'm stoked that you had this idea because um, I've always, you know, I'm a paddling nerd when it comes right. to stuff like this. So what we did uh, to tell the audience, we got 20 participants, roughly. 21. 21 participants to come to the endless pool to my house. And we had them paddle on the same speed on the current, the six foot, the seven foot and the eight foot. Right. Uh, and to measure some sort of measurement of efficiency, we measured the number of strokes taken. Right. Because essentially going the same speed over the same amount of time is the same exact distance. So theoretically, if you took fewer strokes, you'd be using less energy to get to the same place going the same speed. Um, and then we did a second part, which was top speed, or I guess average maximum speed, because we went from a dead stop in the lagoon over a, almost a 10 meter distance yeah into a full sprint through the, the finish line right uh, which it was interesting to 
to also kind of see the, the changes in that. And I think you and I both had some thoughts going into it. Did, did those thoughts get confirmed or denied or do you have just more questions based on it? I mean, there, there was, I mean, the, the big question got answered really quickly, right? Yeah. You could see that from all the data. I mean, if, if you think about it, like, we sat down and we thought, okay, what can we actually study with what we have? So we've got three boards, different lengths, same volume. Uh, and with your endless pool, it was like, yeah, we can measure efficiency because like strokes per minute or per second or whatever, that's a clear metric. Um, and when we put people in the pool and saw, counted the strokes, it was pretty obvious that even after the first three or four, that trend is like longer board, fewer strokes, right? Yeah. And that was like throughout cohort or paddling ability, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that was pretty clear. So that was confirmed, I want to say. Um, the study in the lagoon was more of a design around, well, what else can we measure, right? Like yeah. the question was, how fast can a board really go? How would we do a controlled study around that? And I think the dead stop was kind of the simulating a turn and burn and scenario, right? Yeah. Like where, okay, if we had a longer board, could we actually get to where we need to be faster right. for positioning, right? right. And uh, the surprising thing there was also like it was very clear yeah. like longer boards went faster from dead stop to the end to the to the finish line right yeah, yeah. Well, what i found what was really interesting about the results though that you compiled were what was the difference in length percentage wise between the six to seven seven eight yeah so it's about 16 so percent 16 percent difference right and then the efficiency was Almost five percent. Five percent, yeah. Between both the six seven and then the seven eight. Right. And then for the speed test, it was five percent between the, the six and seven. Six and seven. And then two and a half percent between only the seven and, and half eight. Between yeah. Between the seven and eight. Yeah. Um, and it's to me, it's not clear on that. Like, how, how much does acceleration play into yeah. it, right? Because on the on the one minute paddle, right, endurance paddling against the current. It's pretty clear it's just the board, but yeah. for that, I don't know how long did people even take in seconds? It was like nine, nine seconds. Sec yeah. It was like, right? Yeah, somewhere yeah. around that. A lot of that is acceleration as well, right? Absolutely. And um, I mean, that is a big part of catching waves as well as how fast you can accelerate your mass. Right. So having a bigger board takes longer to accelerate the mass, but once the mass is moving, that momentum carries over into velo higher velocity. So that was the other thing we did. We tried to do it in the ocean, and this yeah. was more subjective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at least my experience was the six accelerates faster in a short distance, or I'm able to turn and burn really quickly, whereas the eight is just more mass to move, but once it's moving, it right. was so much easier to maintain. And that, that subjective part where we just took those boards into the ocean, that was interesting too, because we kind of try to cover all the bases, right? Like. For paddling out, what matters is how efficiently can I paddle, mm -hmm. right? Because that's like, how long does it take you to paddle out, like, when you surf Ocean Beach? Oh, Ocean Beach? Yeah. It depends on the day. But yeah, yeah. it's going to be, let's let's use where we went out. Though. Right. Like, it's, you know, I mean, today's paddle out was takes less like than a minute. 30 seconds, right? Yeah. But still, you're paddling for 30 seconds. Like, can you just get over that set, or yeah. will you have to dive the set, right? Yeah. But at the same volume, clearly, longer board will get you out faster. Um, but, you know, for the turn and burn, if I said, oh, I'm on that eight footer and I need to get from here to there to then be in position to catch the wave, I'd probably want the bigger board. When we went to the ocean, we, we didn't just say, oh, let's catch some waves. We did like 20 minute heats, yeah, right? We heavy. did like, we <laughs> did catch like, as many, catch waves as many waves as, as you, you can, can in 20 minutes. Yeah. And you got to like stand up and make your, you don't have to surf it. You just got to get in, stand up and stick that. And that's a surfed wave, right? Yeah. And so I remember the three of us with the first group, we got really competitive in yeah. that, right? So that was fun. Uh, but I don't even think it's the acceleration. I, I mean, clear, you might have different ideas, but I think at that same volume, the shorter board, and it maybe has, has to do with the day we surfed also. It yeah. wasn't the cleanest day, right? Yeah. So you really had to pick and choose your, your short period as well, right? Yeah. That's where the short board really worked better because you can turn it like a cork, right? And yeah. just turn and go. I don't think I paddled much into waves there. It was more like, oh, I'm in the position. Mm -hmm. I can just turn and go. 
was like with that longer board, just until you've turned it to go. It's just more mess. It's just more. More to deal with. More to deal with, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, it so. was, I was the same mindset. I was like, all right, if I'm on the 6-0, I'm sitting on the inside, yeah. I'm catching anything I can. But the 8-0, I had that in the back of my mind. Oh, maybe I should sit out the back. Right. Ease into this thing. Yeah. You know, have a bit more runway. Yeah. How was how were the other groups with the ocean session? I was curious. Um, we haven't yeah, talked we, about that. Yeah, we took three groups, right? So your group, and then I had two times two people where I just observed on the beach. Um, and so... The fun thing is like people would catch more waves on that six footer versus the seven footer. The days that I sent the other groups out were a little bit bigger and closed out. So mm -hmm. it was a lot more of a paddle battle than, yeah. than actually catching waves. But yeah, shorter catches more waves in, condi in whatever conditions, in, I in guess. In tough right? conditions. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's with the three of us, that was our trend. It was right. the eight caught the least number of waves in 20 minutes across the three of us. Right. The seven a little bit more and then the, and six, the six got the most got the most yeah yeah that was that i found really interesting but it, i think you're right it has to do with the conditions right and in in it's more of a mental where am i going to sit right yeah yeah i can i can actually catch a wave in, with a shorter runway with a 6-0 but with an 8-0 the curvature of the wave you need more space to get down it yeah and so I'm not even sure if it's about volume at that point. It's right. just like, what's the shape of your board? How fast can you turn it? Can I pitch it? Yeah. Right? Because if you're right there at the peak, you can just pitch it in my eight footer. Maybe I want to angle it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And then I don't have all the pressure on my chest to just yeah. like dip it in. Right? Well, and you're thinking about all these other things, like the, the, the angle that the wave is at when you're taking off. Right. Whereas the 6.0, you can have a little bit steeper and fit it into that curve. Right. The 8 I was not even going to try that. Because, you know? <laughs> again, you had to get up to your feet, make it to the bottom to, right. for it to count. Right, right, so right. I was like, man, yeah. I'm going to get the most, you know. But you're right. We got super competitive with it. Um, getting back to the, the paddling study. So the results were 6 was the least efficient, yeah. then 7, and then 8. Um, but we had a discussion the other day how we can't really conclude at that point that it's volume or length. Right. I mean, the only thing we answer is that all the people who said to me, it's all about volume, length doesn't matter. Well, at least, you know, that hypothesis was, was contradicted in that study, right? right? So there is efficiency gain through length. But the piece that was missing as I was writing it up that was glaring was like, well, we should have had at least one board, maybe the seven footer, that varies in volume, right? And then we should have put more people, uh, well, have people try more boards right. but luckily i found this last week you know as i was writing it up um what's the uh, cal state san marcos did a study that's exactly our study but they varied the volume yeah so if i if it's i get perfect. this right they did a five foot board with 20 people um i think it's five different boards ranging from 28 liters to 37 liters or something yeah and and they basically measured stroke rate per minute uh, they were a little bit more advanced than us, right? Much and it must have advanced. been pre-COVID too. They did VO2 measurements <laughs> and uh, heart rate, right? Right. Yeah. So um, they, they, for their efficiency or energy expenditure, yeah. they did VO2 and heart rate. Right. And yeah. what did they discover? Yeah, so interestingly, they, the, the, the headline result for them is like, a board with more volume is easier to paddle. Where it showed up in their data was heart rate and VO2. Yeah. So oxygen consumption was lower and heart rate was lower if your board was thicker. But efficiency, stroke, stroke per minute, rate. was exactly the same across all the boards. I thought that was really exciting, right? Yeah, that was super and, exciting. And, uh, you know, after having done this study where longer boards paddle more efficiently, I sort of try to get my head around what that means because when we designed our study, we, we said, same speed, same distance. So if you have fewer strokes, you're more efficient. If you have more strokes, you're less efficient. And the thing that I didn't quite understand is how can you have more energy expenditure if you have the same strokes per minute? Yeah. How is that possible, yeah. right? Um, and then you brought, obviously, drag into it, which makes total sense, right? Yeah. And it's, if we go back to our, the beginning of this discussion, we talked about hydrodynamics and boat building. Right. And essentially, that's where it all comes to head. So th again, this is 
I'm, I'm, I would love to have a discussion. We're going to have to get Jeff and Sean to yeah. like confirm yeah, yeah. or deny yeah. this. But essentially, if we take the two studies, one says that more volume is less or is more efficient using lower heart rate, lower VO2. But the stroke rate stayed exactly the same, whereas our study, quote unquote, is longer board length, regardless of volume, was more efficient. So we didn't have the heart rate or the VO2, but right. our stroke rate was obviously lower. I mean, right. it's very clear. So that fits perfectly into the theory of wave drag versus form drag. So there was a study done in swimming that showed that when speed doubled, wave drag increased eight times. Now, wave drag is basically when an object is moving through water, it creates like a cosine wave, all right? So high at the front, kind of low at the middle, and then high at the back, right? The faster we go, the higher that amplitude becomes, and so we start to kind of pitch up. Because we're going at speeds so slow that we can't get to planing, we're kind of stuck in this hole. So the faster we go, the harder it is to break through the wave drag, kind of like a tugboat versus a speedboat. Speedboat would get on top because it goes and then it planes. Whereas the speeds at which we paddle, we kind of just go up and we just hold there the faster we go. Form drag in that same study increased four times. So it's squared versus cubed. So when speed doubled, form drag, which is all the other stuff, the stuff that you talked about when you first saw your own video and you're like, my body's in the water. Right. That's form drag. So form drag could be related to just volume, how much buoyancy the board has. So if you have less of it, you're not gonna have as much form drag. Is it you following so far? Yeah, yeah. So in their study, it makes total sense that the more volume you have, the more form drag you get rid of, but you don't get rid of wave drag. Because that's dependent because on the length of the, the, length the system. Water yeah. yeah, of the cosine wave. Right. So if you have a, a cosine wave that's very short, which is like a six foot board, then the faster you go, the steeper that becomes and you don't actually stretch it out. As soon as you get a bigger board on that same speed of wave, it stretches and it flattens the cosine wave out. And so you're able to cut through that wave drag, which is you know, the biggest nemesis that we experience when we paddle is that wave drag and frontal drag. Right. So if, if you were to take just that, and I'm totally gonna, <laughs> gonna claim this, that when it comes to reducing drag and with paddling at paddling speeds, length is more important. Cutting the wave drag down and cutting frontal drag is way more important than cutting form drag down. And I've actually experienced this and I just couldn't piece it together until all this came together. Because I have a 5'8 Andrini that I paddle on. Right. And it's pretty buoyant. And I keep going between shortboard technique and longboard technique. Shortboard technique and longboard technique. Which, you know, you know what the difference is and some people listening know what the difference is. But one, I, I artificially lengthen the, the vessel, which right. is me and my body. And, and the other one, I glide and then I, and I go straight in like a longboard. And I, I can't figure, like I keep going between the two. Right. This confirms that I should really stick to shortboard technique. And make the vessel as long as you can. And make the long, vessel as long artificially. That, that's more important because the buoyancy is doing what it's doing, right. but it's not enough to break wave drag. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. And the interesting thing is, now we didn't measure it, and it would have been great to have heart rate and oxygen consumption. We're going to do but that. Again. We, we have to do it again, right? We're going to do it again. We're going to have them do it. Or we this have them do it. We can, yeah, <laughs> I, can, I can send my boards down because okay. they've got all the equipment, it's right? Perfect. But uh, I don't know. Can we have people breathe into like a VO2 meter like during COVID? Is that a good <laughs> idea? <laughs> I don't know. Um, but the thing is like, and we should have like a, a, a real kinesiologist um, talk about this, but wouldn't you say that overall you expend less energy the, more ma the fewer macro motions you make? So like if I have a lower stroke rate, it is 100% more efficient than having the same strokes with less effort? Right. Logically, yes. It you know, In that my mind. would just make sense to me. If that is the case, it's easier to paddle a longer board, just yeah. like full stop. Yeah. And uh, you know, as, as I was trying to get my head around it, I, the, the way I figured it out as an analogy, um, and I don't know how, how obvious it is, is like, 
changing the length of your board is like switching gears on your bike, right? Like one crank will get you further on a different gear, but changing volume is like having your tires deflated or inflated, right? Yep. So you, you create more friction or not. Yep. That's, that's kind of how I think about it. Yeah. And, uh, and that makes total sense. And it's kind of a shame that we can't, you know, switch gears on a surfboard yeah. and just say, okay, I've paddled out now. Now I'm on a shorter yeah. board. Now I'm on the back, right? Well, in Ocean Beach, that, that's what everyone wants. They want to yeah. go out on a nine-foot board yeah. and then press a button to, like, shrink it right. for, for the wave. Right. But, you know, your analogy of the bike is so spot on. Another kind of question I've always had, because in level two, I put the sensors on people's hands yeah. and measure their stroke force. And a few of the groups that I've had, I've had them paddle a longboard and paddle a shortboard. Now the speeds were different, so it wasn't it wasn't a controlled kind of study or, or but it, but I found the results somewhat interesting in that even though the speed on the current was faster on the longboard, they used less force. Like the average force per stroke was less on the longboard than on the shortboard, and I found that that really interesting that someone that, that there would be a difference in the amount of force someone would push through the water now I thought logically that it was more psychological that oh I don't need to go I don't need as much to go as far but it could be it could be more than that it could be the way that the water moves underneath the board with that waterline length and the buoyancy and so that's another study that I would love for us to maybe embark on yeah. is to try and fix the speed and measure force based off volume and length. Right. So it'd have to be both the differences and then we could come to some sort of conclusion around that. Because I, I'll tell you one thing, I, I get more tired riding a longboard than I do a shortboard. And that's, I think, mostly <laughs> because of all the mass that I have to move around. It's not the paddling, it's just all the movement and all that. And if I'm at it's a dead stop. It's not because you're catching way more waves because you're sitting out back <laughs> and catching <laughs> no, everything. <laughs> no. That's not an issue. That's, I actually end up catching less waves. That was what we proved. Right. Right. But no, it's the, it's, I have to take this huge board. And, and a, an extreme example would be my like 12 foot prone board. Mm -hmm. It does take a bit of effort to get that thing going. But once it's going, it's super hard to stop. Right. And that thing's designed to cut through anything. Um, whereas the short board, I feel like, I'm more connected to the water. I can accelerate a lot faster. Yeah, my top speed isn't as high, and I know that, but in terms of catching waves, I don't need top speed, I need acceleration. Right. So these are all ideas that I would love for us to explore more. Right. Um, but the force was the one that, that, this is starting to lead me down that road of inflated tire versus non-inflated tire. And how hard are you gonna push on that gear right. based on that? Maybe it's a volume thing instead of a length thing for force. So that's, that's the one thing, the one thing that jumped out at me when we found the volume study, right? The interesting thing is that these guys, you know, being published scientists and whatnot, they, they were also measuring other things like uh, pitch and roll yeah. of these boards, right? Yeah. So e effectively, like how much does the surfer move the board, the whole system, as they're paddling dependent on volume? And I think, I don't have it in front of me, but again, the whole system was wobblier, the less volume there was effectively. Correct. So one of the things that I was wondering is, is actually all of that extra effort going into paddling or is it going into stabilization? Because whether you want it or not, you can't, you, you want to have as much force going backwards, right? To move yourself forwards. Mm -hmm. But if you also have to balance the whole system, mm -hmm. isn't there a lot of effort that you're sort of secondary muscles are doing? Absolutely, and, and this is straight out of level one, step two, which is lateral balance control, is, is for example, if I were to push you over, you put your hand out, right. stop yourself. So if you're not balanced using your core muscles on a board with right. the roll and the pitch, yeah. right, now your arms are taking some of that load right, right from this area that mm -hmm. is supposed to be able to control it. And as soon as your arm takes some of the load, it takes away from its capacity to produce power. Right. Right. And so you're talking about overall system in terms of, okay, am I using my core and right. I'm reserving my arms? Right. But I'm going to venture to guess that most people in the study were probably relying upon their arms more right. for control than, or more of a mix. Right. Than a pure using the core. 
Well, if you're just looking at energy expenditure, I would guess that it doesn't matter whether you're using your core or your arms because you're still using more to balance the system, right. whether it's your core muscles it depends or your on, arm muscle. It depends right? on which is stronger in right. that individual. Right. But the thing is like, is that maybe also the reason why on your force sensors, yeah. that shows up? Because the, the, your force sensors don't really look at like directionality or do they? Like the not, vector. Not like, that set. Yeah. I have another set that does directionality. Right. Yeah. But that set is just straight, you know, uh, back. Right. Yeah. Because if you had, you know, a way to measure, oh, how much of that arm motion was going to lateral stabilization Ooh, I do have that. versus yeah. longboard where yeah. you don't roll. So maybe you don't need to expend as much energy. Yeah. Yeah, no, and, and um, that's a good point. So, so we'll have to use the other system to measure force to get the left, right, lateral, and it has the vertical push. When, when are you pushing down versus yeah. up uh, in the back, maybe, and yeah. then forward or back? Yeah. So it, it does do all three, which is interesting. We should we just should have leaned heavier on our volunteers and took more of their time to put four sensors in all of them, <laughs> right? In hindsight. Well, as I told you, the the original four sensor system, it's a bit more clunky. It yeah. takes more time to set up. But right. the, the the one that actually does the trajectory yeah. and the, the three different planes, that's a lot easier, actually. Oh, nice. Um, so that's app-based. It's Bluetooth-based. Right. We can actually swap it out pretty quickly. The only problem with that is that I found that the data isn't as, I wouldn't say accurate, but it's not as similar. Right. Right. I would hope that at least the backwards would be similar to the first system, right. which is a little bit more uh, sophisticated. Going back to the pitch roll thing, um, I, you know, I, I talk a lot about level one about that, how depending on the board, you would roll more or less based on the width of the board. Right. It could be volume based now, that's proving more volume right. based. Um, I would love to see maybe a width and the roll. Right. And then the pitch also, same, same deal is the pitch adjust adjustments based off of the, the volume as well. So that actually, their results are aligned with how I teach a right. lot of that. But that is, again, directing it towards volume and not towards width Although, the board. Although, you know, if I, so one question I would have, right, is like if you measure, that's volume study showed that less volume, more roll. Now that can have different meanings, right? Because if I remember it right, it's like you want some amount of roll because your body system actually prefers rolling like you do in swimming, mm -hmm. right? So is that something that you, you kind of want a little bit, but not too much? Like, how do you think about that, right? Because right. roll is not bad. If your board lets you, you should be doing it, right? Mm -hmm. Or am yeah. I wrong in that? No, no, no. So basically, the, the, generally, the smaller, narrower board, you yeah. roll more. Right. And the, the wider, more volume boards, you, you still have some roll. Right. But it's a lot less. Right. So it's, it's, that's the kind of the spectrum, right? right? But, but how is it really driven? Is it driven off volume? Is it driven off width? Is it driven off their ability to balance laterally with right. their core muscles or they're, they're using their hands, right? Right. Because uh, most surfers that I see use their arms to balance. Their first initial entrance to the water is here. Right. And it's, t it's basically a balance and then mm -hmm. they get to this section and then they push back. Right. So that, that's where all the waste comes from. Right. Um, but again, I don't think in that study they were focused on that. Right, right, right. There's so, there's so much. It's so exciting. <laughs> but I, I, I freak out about this stuff, and I'm, I'm just curious. What is next for us? Like, mm. <laughs> I mean, is it? We talked about rocker. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really profiles. excited to try rocker. Um, yeah, we should try rocker for sure. Right, and those because rocker that's profiles? another. That's another myth, that may be confirmed or not confirmed. Right. Mm -hmm. that, more rocker doesn't paddle as well. Mm -hmm. So you're saying fix the length, fix the length, fix the volume, fix change length and volume, change the rocker, change the rocker profile. I mean, yeah, that's what we did with this one. We had the same outline. I I I stretched out the rocker, but it was the same rocker across right. all three lengths. Why? Because I wanted to keep form drag the same, right? The frontal drag, when you take a cross section of that object, when I basically yep. look look at it frontally, it needs to look exactly the same. Exactly, yeah. Well, or as close as I can get it, yeah. right? Um, and the volume obviously would kept constant. So really, only the thickness and the length is what I changed. Now I would keep maybe the seven foot board for our rocker study. Yeah. And um, yeah, just 
keep that the same and add one with more and one with less rocker. Yeah. And, and that's yeah, super crazy. interesting. Yeah. The study, our study also confirmed with me when using correct technique, mid, mid lengths are the worst of both worlds. <laughs> and this was, this is something I was really hoping for. So I was super biased, but at least with the, my clients that did it, yeah. their results and my results without, I was more thinking about it, but they right. weren't thinking about it. Right. The mid length was, it's not a long board. It doesn't have that length. Right. doesn't have that glide. It's not quite a short board. Like you can kind of alter and manipulate the water right. line with your arm. And so, at least with my results, it was the six and seven efficiency were exactly the same. Right. And then the eight jumped. Right. And was similar with a lot of my clients. Yours right. was pretty close. Mine too. was. I think mine were linear, if I remember this Yours, right. Okay, so but your speed one was similar. Was similar, yeah. yeah. So just as a shaper, the one thing that I found really mind blowing is that the data said one thing and the people said something completely different, right? Yeah, the subjective. So, feedback when we went to the ocean we counted like how many waves did you catch but we also asked them how did that feel and we asked them the same thing when we did the the very controlled environment studies and so I mean granted that that speed setting you had that was not like super easy especially on the short board right mm -hmm. so I, I had to work a little bit right to keep yeah. that up and on the eight footer obviously that that was easy um, but it seemed like as a shaper that there can be just way too much or way too little volume based on what people feel, right? So that seven foot, 42 range, everybody just liked that yeah. across like our, our, our set of testers. They said, hey, this feels right. The six footer felt too thick to them mm -hmm. and the eight footer felt like it was too wobbly, right? Which I think the only people who came back and said, I can surf this were you and me and everybody else was complaining. <laughs> it was like, this is too thin, right? Yeah. Um, so just, just from that perspective, that was really, really interesting was like, while I can make a thin, a thin long board, it's like, maybe there's some, some range that is quote unquote What is going right. to be the perception of it being? Right. Yeah. What are they going to feel on it? Right. I did notice though on like, you know, you did a great job at, at making it even throughout, but there are points on certain boards, especially mid lengths and, and slightly shorter long boards, like the eight foot. Yeah that when you position yourself, it's just, it's so sensitive in one spot. And then it's just, boom, you're down. Um, and I felt that on the seven and on the eight, but not on the six. The six was easy to find that positioning and hold that, that horizontal balance. But the seven and eight, and, I've, and not just with your boards, but with other mid lengths that I've paddled, I found that it, there is just this strange middle fulcrum point that <laughs> People just get to, and then it's like, boom. They're like, oh, no, that's too far forward. Ah, you just don't like mid lengths. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I'm so biased against it. It's crazy. What were some interesting observations that you made on the days of, like watching the different participants? Because we had a range of different size right. participants and genders. Size, genders, paddling ability, Experience. Just fitness yeah, level. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was really surprised at sort of, how varied everybody's performance was on the thick short board. It's almost like, and, and that was whether they were experienced or not. That was, I mean, some of the Ocean Beach chargers, I, yeah. I didn't look as smooth uh, in that pool yeah. as you would expect they them, struggled. right? They, they, yeah. Right, they struggled. Yeah. Was it because the board was too thick? Was it because, what your, your observation, and you've seen many people paddle in the pool was basically, the, the, the current coming on reveals technique flaws, right? Yeah. And maybe that was the, the greatest takeaway is just to see how smooth some people are and how not smooth some people are, irrespective of how much experience they yeah. have, right? Yeah. That was sort of mind blowing to see. And then how different people talk about what they like and what they don't like compared to what they look like, right? right. So like I'm an observer, I look at them, it's like, you're struggling here. And they come out, it's like, I like this board. Yeah. And that was very strange. I Especially as a, as a shaper, it's like, I want to make you something that you like. Yeah. But when you tell me what you like, it might not actually be what works. I don't know how to reconcile that, right? Except for giving people lots of stuff to try. That's human but, behavior. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I noticed that same thing with the smoothness of their paddling in the pool. Again, the pool, it amplifies deficiencies right. on purpose. Um, but even on the speed test when they were in the lagoon, right. there were 
there were some people that had really, really fast times and terrible technique. Right. But their speed was high. And, right. and it's almost, as a coach, it's the, the bad reward cue. <laughs> like they're like catching waves and they're doing it, but yeah. they're, they're doing it in a way that's going to hurt their shoulder or they could be better. My wife always has this great, was this great quote. You, you know when you're, you're talking and people are like, um, oh, yeah, our parents, you know, they like smoked when they were pregnant and drank. Right. And, and you're like, you're like, oh, that's just, that's just how it was. My right. wife always says, yeah, but how much better could you have been? <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of how I look at it. It's like, yeah, you're catching waves, but how much better could you be if you were doing it correctly? Right. Right. And um, so I, I noticed that. I noticed also I was curious about the weight to volume ratio as well as the length. So we did have a variety of sized right. uh, participants. Right. And that weight to volume ratio plays a big role in form drag. Because if you have because more weight that's per volume. Like how, how, uh, how deep are you in the water? Right? Exactly. Based, it's based it's, it's how weight, much right? drag you have. And yeah. so those, those more experienced folks that may have had more weight uh, would be, yeah, a higher weight to volume ratio where they're submerging the board more, they're struggling both on form drag and on the 6 they they're also struggling on wave drag. So right. it almost amplified their struggle right, right, in that right. sense. Whereas the lighter, you know, the 6 was like almost like a longboard for some. For some, yeah. Yeah, and they're yeah. just like skirting on top of the water. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's one thing that I kind of wondered, and I don't, I mean, that's where I want to spend more time with, with participants is like, do people have a sweet spot for sort of volume range that's irrespective of weight? Like, I mean, that's just my theory. For me personally, like, as soon as I go over shortboard length, like over 6.6, six, like, I find anything over 45 liters a lot, yeah. which is why I like my all my range of, like, 8-foot boards that are, like, in the 40-liter range. Yeah. That works really well for me, and everybody else says that's too thin, right? Is Is there, like, a... A sweet spot for like it's like a personal preference, like a personal yeah. preference on the how much you want to spread out that volume right I don't know yeah and I, I'm, I, I'm I try not to get into volume too much um, I'm my shaper still old school he doesn't write the volume on it so yeah. we're just kind of guesstimating what it is right. for the most part um, but it, what I tell clients all the time I'm like hey if I could teach you how to paddle any of the boards based on what technique you want to use right you can now choose a board based on the wave conditions and how you want to ride it. And so that's my mindset is always less paddling. I think a lot of people when they hear volume, they're like paddling, right? Right. They immediately go to, I just want it to paddle better. Right, right, right. Right. And uh, I always say that no surfboard paddles well. It's not even designed to paddle well. Right. You know, compared, to, compared to my prone board, that thing is meant to paddle well. Right. It's designed that it way. It just doesn't surf very well. Does it, it doesn't <laughs> turn. It doesn't turn at all. But surfboards are meant to turn essentially more than paddle and so uh, for me I try to explain like hey if you look at certain conditions and you want to ride a certain wave uh, or a certain way in that wave condition then that's how you should choose your board right because the paddling stuff we can take care of given whatever board you want to ride you have a specific technique to use that's going to be the quote-unquote most efficient you might be slower than another board but you know, good examples OB on like a 10 foot day. I'll, I'll try to ride my 5.11 or my 6.0, uh, whereas everyone else is on 7s, seven sixes, some of them. Well, I can get out. It might take me a little bit longer, but I can get out. I feel comfortable getting out. I don't spend a ton of energy, but then I'll be in the hook. So the curvature of the wave fits or the board fits the curvature of the wave better. Whereas some people might look at that and be like, I want a board that paddles really well. Right. And then you see video of people surfing OB and you're like, that doesn't look fun because they're just going straight. Right. Right. And there's not really anything to it. Right. Um, so I've now gone into this mindset of, okay, once I'm riding, how does volume feel? Right. Right. And so do I, am I starting to feel a difference? I don't know. <laughs> I'm still, <laughs> I'm still trying to figure that out. But riding your boards, I, it was so interesting because the 8 you could turn so easily. Well, it's it's an outline. It's like a short boardy mid length outline, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously the seven and the six turned 
well too, but it, it, is, it was like the eight was like, oh, I've got this long gun that I can turn. Right. And I really liked that. Yeah, yeah. And, and maybe that was, what was the, the volume again? It was 42. 42 and a half or something yeah. like that, right? So, you know, an 80, 42 and a half, I kind of like that, but other participants probably didn't like it. No, it was, <laughs> it was too thin, like yeah. not, not enough stability across so the... So your, 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 your question around preference and volume, right? I think it definitely has validity. And I think what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to go watch them surf. Right. And, and give them different boards. And sort of when I talk about this range of preference, it's like a very different range from what you just quoted, right? Like if I'm thinking, oh, I'm gonna be on a shortboard, right? Then volume is all about what is the ride. I think if you think 70 and above, uh -huh. right, in that range of like, what's my board to volume ratio almost? Yeah. Yeah, that, that volume isn't going to affect your ride all that much, right? Because it's like, it's the length of the planing surface that's really going to take about. care of that, right? Because, yeah. like, I mean, yeah. And, and it's the rail shape that's going to dictate how you're going to sync that. Yeah. Not like, well, let's say it's 7.6, right? Not, not like, how much volume that board really has right. there like where it comes to bears how does it paddle how does it feel as you're sitting on it right well and i would say where how it fits the curve of yeah. the wave that you're trying like if you're catching it early yeah because you have a little bit more speed yeah. built up uh you can manage that transition but if it's like this if it's a very the, the high rate of change of the yeah. wave formation and you have to catch it here, yeah. the 80 is not gonna work. Well, yeah, that's like, then it don't, again, volume doesn't matter in that at all because right. like you've again, got this length and you've yeah. just gotta put it somewhere, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's that, in, when we're talking about wave catching, then it's really more about planing speed requirement. Yeah. In essence is what you're saying because you're talking about the area that it's planing over. Yes? Uh, oh, no. No, that's more like when you're riding it, right? Like yeah, how much rail I mean. do you have, right? When you're catching, Right, that's where you have this curvature and you're, you know, trying to like just pitch into that wave. That's like angle of attack, yeah. curvature of your board. How can you position yourself in that? that but also like if you do a, a tight turn in the pocket, right. you're back into that same almost takeoff position where if you have a lot of board, it's going to catch. Right. If you have less board, it's going to fit in that curve as you come around again. For sure. So those are the things I'm thinking in my head in terms right. of volume, but you've, you've put some new things in my noggin about the rail line and yeah, yeah, yeah. the curvature of the outline. So do you think you're going to start, start stopping people from, um, when they ask you to, to shape a board, you're going to be like, well, let me see how you surf first. <laughs> let me, let's go out. I'm going to give you three different boards. <laughs> I want you to tell me which you, one you like. You know, I found that, um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm shaping mostly for friends and friends of friends. Um, people are almost shy to like try stuff, right? They, they want to talk to me about what they want. Uh -huh. And I say, well, I've got three here. You should take these. And like half the time they say, no, no, no that's okay. Which is kind of hmm, so weird to me, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Well, the, so, yeah. the surfer shaper relationship, I think, uh, and I've talked about it before, it's super critical. And the more that you get to know them, they get to know you, they feel more comfortable trying your stuff out. You get more comfortable kind of recommending things that you might see as deficiencies right right and be like, i'm just gonna pat it here or there and right and give me feedback yeah but yeah. i think that's i think that's what's lost when you get something right off the rack yeah and the thing that i enjoy the most is if people like the first board they get enough to come back because like that first one is, even if i know how they surf it's kind of a stab in the dark because mm -hmm. like okay we had a conversation i saw you write it well, but how did you like the first thing I made for you, right? Um, I've got a very good friend of mine. I'm, that third board I made for her, finally that's the one she's always riding. The first two were what she wanted, but for some reason they'd never end up in the car, right? <laughs> so, you know, it's like stated preference versus revealed preference, right? Yeah. It's like, um, yeah. Yeah, um, I, I was victim of that in the 90s. Yeah. With the thin Kelly Slater boards. Right. It's what you said you wanted, but yeah. it's not what you really wanted. Well, I didn't know what I wanted right. was at that stage of learning at that point. Right. But that was what everything was, was out there. At least in today's society and culture, there's a little bit more acceptance of alternative boards, longer boards, thicker boards, things that help 
at certain stages. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't surfing at that time when yeah. it, when it was very one track like I think I I hopped on that bandwagon when it's already when it was already starting to get super diverse, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Right on, man. Well, that was that, I thought that was a great study. I'm I'm stoked to yeah. do another one. So, yeah. we have to either get Sean and Jeff to repeat our study and confirm our results right with the same participants <laughs> and with their own boards that they stretch out maybe. right because right, they have now the the neutral was it five foot they've got a five foot yeah, yeah. Um, and then we gotta keep pushing yeah. rocker next rocker next rocker next I think. and and we we gotta form an opinion on what is the what is sort of the key metric right yeah. like is strokes per minute really what we want to go for maybe we should do the force same study but with the force with the force yeah That'd be an interesting one. I mean, if I think back on our study, like, I totally want to do another one. I totally want to do a rocker one. We just got to figure out how to get more participants more quickly. That was the hardest part about that. It's like <laughs> getting, you know, two times 10 people yeah. on the same day at the same time to, like, do this. Yeah. They were great, though. Yeah, I, they were great. Got to thank them big time for yeah. coming out. And it was a good time having a chat with them, too. Well, cool, man. Thank awesome. you. Thank that you. That was super fun.